Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing the ras raf mech erk pathway, and we've now seen all of the members of that pathway. Okay, so in the previous video we got to the culmination, which is that we had an activated erk now. Okay, and this was currently in the cytoplasm. And what's now going to happen is the activated ERK is going to go into the nucleus and it's going to phosphorylate transcription factors. Okay, so let's have our nucleus here. I'll draw it a little bit more elongated so that I've got as much space as possible. Okay, so in comes our ERK enzyme. Okay, so it's coming into the nucleus and it's going to phosphorylate transcription factors. Okay, now before I actually show you which transcription factors it's going to phosphorylate, let me just remind you of the basic principle of what a transcription factor is. So let's let this, uh, these two lines here once again represent a piece of double-stranded DNA. Okay, and let's say that this region of the double-stranded DNA that I'm now boxing, and I'll highlight this box in in green here, and let's say that this represents a gene. Okay, so this is some gene. Now, uh, upstream of all genes in the eukaryotic genome, you have a little region known as the promoter region. Okay, so I'll colour this in in purple. So, uh, the promoter region is not uh, involved in being translated itself. Okay, so it's not going to be turned into a sequence of amino acids uh, by a ribosome. However, it's extremely important in regulating uh, the uh, amount of the downstream gene that we actually transcribe, basically. How much we transcribe the downstream gene, i.e. it regulates how much the gene product of this downstream gene we're actually going to make. Okay, and the reason for that is that in order to transcribe the downstream gene into mRNA, you need the enzyme RNA polymerase 2, which we've met before. Okay, you need the RNA polymerase 2 enzyme to come and bind to the promoter region. Okay, so it needs to come in and bind to the promoter region. It will then open up the DNA at the promoter region, and then it will work its way along the coding strand of the DNA, synthesizing a piece of mRNA. Okay, now, um, if, so, well, promoter regions in front of genes are all different, okay, so every gene has its own promoter region. Now, different promoter regions will bind to RNA polymerase with different affinities. Some will bind really, really strongly, okay, and they'll bind all the time to RNA polymerase 2, and that means that RNA polymerase 2 will continuously be binding to this promoter region, working its way along the coding strand of the gene and producing uh, mRNA that is complementary to that coding strand. Okay, shown here in blue. Okay, which means that you'll get a lot of protein being produced. So if the promoter region has a very high affinity for binding to RNA polymerase 2, you'll get a large amount of transcription occurring, you'll produce a lot of mRNA, and therefore you'll produce a lot of protein. So the gene will have a high expression level if the promoter region has a high affinity for RNA polymerase 2. If, on the other hand, the promoter region has a really terrible affinity for RNA polymerase 2, then RNA polymerase 2 will bind there hardly ever, okay? You'll get hardly any mRNA being produced for the gene, and therefore you'll get hardly any protein being produced. So the promoter region therefore controls how much of the gene is actually produced, basically, if the gene product of the gene is actually produced. Okay, so now what's a transcription factor? So, uh, a transcription factor is a molecule that can bind to the promoter regions of a huge number of different genes. Generally, transcription factors bind to the promoter regions of hundreds of different genes. Okay, and basically, when it binds to this promoter region, it will change the affinity of that promoter region for RNA polymerase 2. Now, at some of the promoter regions that the transcription factor binds to, it will increase the affinity of that promoter region for RNA polymerase 2. And at those which increases the affinity for RNA polymerase 2, it will result in RNA polymerase 2 binding there more often, and therefore working its way along the coding strand of the DNA and synthesizing a complementary piece of mRNA more often. Therefore, you'll get more mRNA being produced, and therefore, um, um, more protein, okay? So at those where it enhances the affinity, it will increase the expression of the downstream gene. 
whereas at other promoter regions which it binds to, it will decrease the affinity of that promoter region for binding to RNA polymerase 2. RNA polymerase 2 will therefore bind there less often, and you'll get less mRNA being produced, and uh, therefore um, the expression will be decreased by this transcription factor. So transcription factors change gene expression within the cell, basically. They increase the expression of some genes, decrease the affinity of other genes. Okay, and these things, these transcription factors, is what we are going to be activating via uh, this ERK uh, enzyme. So ERK will come into the nucleus of the cell, okay? And there are two main transcription factors that I'm going to talk about it activating. There are a huge number of different transcription factors which it activates. But the two that I'm going to talk about are, firstly, ELK1. Okay, so ELK1 is going to be phosphorylated by uh, ERK enzymes. Okay, so here's the phosphate group that's been added on. And now it's going to actually be an active transcription factor. So previously it didn't actually do anything, but now it's got the phosphate group added on. It's actually going to act as a transcription factor, and it's going to change gene expression. Now, one of the key genes that ELK1 upregulates the expression of is a protein called CFOS. So this is going to result in an increase in the production of CFOS, and therefore we're going to end up with more CFOS protein. Now, CFOS itself actually forms a complex with another protein, which then acts again as a transcription factor. So it's going to bind to another protein called C-Jun, which is already present within the uh, nucleus. Okay, and together, CFOS C-Jun heterodimers, as they're called. Okay, uh, so this is called a heterodimer, and I'll just write that in a moment. So this is called a CFOS... Uh, and then we put a dash C Jun heterodimer. Okay, so a dimer is a two membered complex, basically, a complex consisting of two things. Okay, hetero means different. So this means that the two things that are dimerized together in this dimer are going to be different, and indeed they are. One is C Fos and one is C Jun. So this overall is called a C Fos C Jun heterodimer. Okay, right. Uh, so. Um, once ELK1, therefore, has been phosphorylated by ERK, what's going to happen is you're going to get the formation of these CFOS C gen heterodimers because we've increased the expression of CFOS. Okay, these then um, are going to um, act as transcription factors themselves. And now, what I'd like to do before discussing what CFOS and C gen actually do, I'd like to discuss another direct target of ERK enzymes because this other direct target of ERK enzymes does pretty much the same thing as CFOS C gen heterodimers. Dimers. So another target of the ERK enzymes is a transcription factor known as CMYC. Okay, so in green here, this is CMYC. And what's going to happen is ERK uh, enzymes are going to phosphorylate CMYC. Okay, and this is now going to result in the activation of CMYC. And CMYC is now going to be an active transcription factor. And CMYC transcription factors pretty much do the same thing as CFOS, C Jun heterodimer transcription factors. Okay, so these are going to lead to changes in gene expression. Okay, so they're going to increase the expression of certain genes and decrease the expression of other genes. Okay, and basically these changes in gene expression can do two things. Firstly, they can promote differentiation of cells. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, um, we have a huge number of different cell types in our body, okay? Neurons, for instance, the cells of the brain, and then a skin cell. Contrast those two, okay? But they have are genetically identical. They have exactly the same genes. So why are those two cells so different? Well, the answer is epigenetics. They are not expressing the same genes, basically. They are using different portions of their genomes and therefore making different proteins, okay? Uh, so, if you change gene expression, if you change which genes you are producing, you are going to change which cell type potentially you are, and differentiation is around about changing the type of cell you are, basically. 
Okay, or choosing the cell type that you're going to become. Right, so changes in gene expression can promote differentiation into certain cell types within the body. And these changes in gene expression famously also cause proliferation. So when a cell wants to divide in two, you need a huge change in the expression of genes, basically, because, you know, the cell has to firstly grow, okay, it needs to become big enough to divide into two cells, and to grow, you need very different levels of gene expression to if you're just wanting to stay the same size. Okay, so changes in gene expression that bring around preparation to divide into two uh, are also triggered by CMYK and C -fos, C -gen heterodimers. So this is overall the fi finale of this pathway, that it changes gene expression, and these changes in gene expression can promote differentiation and proliferation depending on other factors, of course. Okay, so that now concludes our discussion of the RAS-RAF-MEC-ERC pathway.